Hi, I'm Nana Gill and I want to be a superhero. And this week, the superpower that I'm trying to get is the power of the earth. So far, I've tried to capture the power of the wind and the earth's heat. And today, I'm going to try and capture the power of water. What's that? You thought this was about earth, not water? Well, did you know that over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water? That means if you were to divide the Earth's surface into 10 equal parts, then seven of them would be covered by water. Huh, that's a lot. That's all the oceans and all the lakes and maybe all the puddles. I don't know if they count puddles in that. Yeah, they must do. Anyway, water can be really powerful. If you've ever been swimming in the ocean and you've been hit by a huge wave, poof, you know that being knocked back by the ocean means that it's super powerful. It can knock you off your feet. So let's do a little experiment to see if we can harness the power of water. Maybe we can be as strong as those waves. Yeah, for this you are going to need a large bowl or you can use the kitchen sink, a jug with water in it, a used empty plastic bottle. I've used a water bottle like this. It really needs to have at least seven centimeters of flat, smooth plastic. A sheet of stiff card that's 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Another sheet of stiff card that's about 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. A sheet of paper at least 16 centimeters wide. A mug or something round to draw around. A wooden skewer. Some blue tack or plasticine a marker, sticky tape, scissors, a ruler, a paper clip, and a length of string. Okay, now let's get started. First of all, we're going to make some bearings. Now we've done this a few times and you know how this works. So we're gonna take our paper and we're going to wrap it around our wooden skewer and then you're gonna tape it closed. And then you're gonna to want to cut that in half. We'll come back to those later. Next, we're going to make some turbine blades. Now this is where our plastic bottle comes in. We're gonna turn this flat section here into our turbine blades. So this is probably a good time to get a grown up to just come and give you a little bit of a hand. So the first thing we're gonna do is pierce a hole in the bottle, right at the top of the flat section. And we're gonna cut round and round and round and round until the top comes off. Okay, we're not gonna need this bit. Next, you're gonna cut down one end and then we're gonna cut the bottom off by twisting and going around. Ta-da! We don't need the bottom. And now we're left with a strip that looks like this. Now it's quite curly and that curve is actually gonna help us to catch the water in our turbine. So if you need to tidy up any of the edges, you can tidy them up by cutting them. And then what we're gonna do is try and make it as flat as possible. Now, because it wants to roll up, I'm gonna put a cup on one side and then I can keep the other side flat. Now, we want our blades to be three centimeters wide. Here's three, one, two, three, that's one, and then six, and then nine, and then 12, and then what comes next? You know, 15, and finally 18. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six available here. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side, and then we're gonna draw lines across there to make strips. Right, you're gonna join those dots, you're gonna make the lines, and then you're going to cut them out with your scissors, making sure that they're nice and straight. And that's gonna give you six turbine blades that are all the same size. We're gonna put those to the side. Now we need to make our blade housing. And this is gonna hold our turbine blades in place. So we're gonna need two discs of card, one for either side of the turbine. So find something round that's about 10 centimeters across. And I'm gonna draw around one and then two. And I'm gonna cut those out. Okay, so we've got two circles. Now we're gonna put the circles together like this and we're gonna push our skewer through the center. All right, that's all the way through. We're gonna take the skewer off for now and come back to those. And we've got our six blades and we want them to be evenly spaced around the edge of our wheel. So we need to mark up one of our wheels first. I'll take this one. So we're gonna draw a line 
from the center of the circle out to the edges. Okay, once you've got your line, you want to divide this into six portions. So the easiest way to do that is to take one half of your circle and try and figure out what you think would be thirds. Next, what we're gonna do is take this dot and our center dot and line those up with the ruler and draw a line through. And same for the other one. So this is where we're going to put our fins. And each of the lines measure two centimeters in from the edge and mark a line. Okay, now we want to stick our two wheels together so we can cut them both at the same time. And then with your scissors, you're going to cut a narrow slot at each one of these lines down to your two centimeter mark. Okay, all of my notches are cut, we will come back to that. Now you're gonna cut two smaller circles of card and they're gonna act as a spool. You can draw around a coin if that's easier for you. Okay, my spool is done. You're gonna thread your spool guide onto your skewer. Again, by making a hole in the middle and then you're going to push it towards the far end of the skewer. You're gonna do that again with the next bit of spool and again, thread this out of the way to the top end of your skewer. Okay, so you're gonna cut the tape that holds your discs together and then you're gonna put them onto your skewer and then separate them with enough distance that's about a turbine width distance apart. Now make sure that all of your turbines, because they're curved, are facing up the same way. And you're gonna slot them in, you're gonna tape it on to the side. First one on, let's move to number two. Okay, last bit of tape for my final one. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now what you need to do is slide your spool guide in closer to the wheel. So this is just gonna stop our string from getting tangled as the turbine blades move like this. Okay, superheroes, we have got ourselves an amazing turbine. Shall we see if it works? First, you're gonna need to put this together. So take your bowl or your sink. Now you're gonna put your bearings on the ends. That's gonna help it to move around. And you're gonna secure your bearings with a little bit of blue tack, just so they can't slide forwards or backwards. Then you're gonna need your string and the easiest way to tie your string on is with a little bit of plasticine or blue tack, and we're gonna tie that onto the drive shaft. Again, I'm gonna tie a little knot in the end that's gonna help it stop sliding or slipping while it's in there. And then we're gonna put it in to the spool guide, and we're gonna blue tack that down. Perfect. Now, at the other end of your string, you're going to want to open up a paper clip, and I'm gonna tie one end of my string around one of the hook ends. Time for the moment of truth. And we want to pull something super heavy and super awesome. So why don't we, I know, we have got this, a wind racer, do you remember? Do you think that we can pull this along? Well, let's have a look. We're gonna attach our hook onto our sail here. And you know who we need? Nano Nano Ghoul to the rescue. Why don't we put her on too and see if she can go for a little drive. Okay, take your position. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your water and you're gonna see if the water can make your water wheel spin. Look at it go. Yes, it's working, look at that. Oh, that works, that is perfect. There you go, that's your water wheel that managed to pull a machine in a different direction. Ta-da! I hope you've enjoyed harnessing the power of water to move heavy things. And I will see you again tomorrow for more superhero science. Hmm, wonder how much water it would take to lift an elephant. <gasps> I know, probably trunk loads. <laughs> see you later.